Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, we are going to discuss uh, 2019 uh, GP paper. If you do not have the question with me, still is, uh, I think it's still okay. But you must have uh, uh, this one, Contract Acts plus Civil Law Acts with you. Because later on, I think we uh, I'll, I'll need to show need, need to show you on how to how to uh copy something from this statute into your uh, answer sheet you know okay uh this is uh, the disclaimers that I would like to make every time I did class uh, I repeatedly say that uh, this is a pro bono class and I'm um, just somebody very junior in in this area and of course uh because the answers uh, here was provided by me, the consulting with uh, several colleagues of mine. Uh, it was not the standard answer that is endorsed by LPQB. Please understood that. Huh? So uh, veracity of this answer, accuracy of this answer uh, cannot be guaranteed. Okay, and of course, I appreciate if you could give me some constructive feedback in uh, the manner of teaching and also the material use of teaching so that we can benefit more people, you see. Okay, uh, coming to the point, uh, a GP paper, uh, since uh, I believe most of you are conditional pass, so GP paper, the time management is a little bit different because you have reading time of 20 minutes. You can read your questions for 20 minutes. So when you want to do this, how do you make full use of this 20 minutes will be an issue. Do not just simply read without marking the paper. Uh, please remember that because the questions are usually they are drafted in a very thick way, you know. By the time you read the second question, probably... You will, forgot, you will forget what you have read about the first question. And then if you do not put some important remarks later on when you are answering, you may miss things out. Okay? Try to mark and highlight some important points and try to design the flow already. Because more or less, huh, the first question will always ask what is your course of action or recourse available uh, for the party that you are representing. And second question usually will, will be covering the issues of their match. What are the loss suffered from that particular party? As simple as that. So mark those points, categorize. So the one important, uh, maybe just a trick to share with you, maybe you can use different uh, color of highlighter. One, um, uh, this uh, what we call the yellow color highlighter. The other one you can use a pink one or orange one. So make difference, you know. So first part, cause of action, why you say so, the important point, point you highlight with uh, green, uh, I mean yellow color, and the rest you highlight with uh, what we call orange color, something like that. Mark uh, and write, okay? Write down the proviso of the law as well. And I'm afraid to say that uh, some of you may run out of time to the point that uh, some of the students that gave me feedback, they do not have time to finish up their last statement of claim. Personally, I feel this is quite a pity la, because a statement of claim usually carries a lot of mark. If it is not 20 marks, but usually will be 15 marks at least. So please do not try to perfect your uh, question A or B. The one that you should really focus now is the drafting of statement of claim. Okay, if you follow the statement of, I mean, you practice on statement of claim, uh, I'm sure uh, half of your leg is stepping into the safety zone to pass. Okay, okay, we go to first question. Mr. and Mrs. Wet, newlyweds, were looking to purchase a home. After scouring the market, the couple fell open promotional brochures and attended sales campaign for a housing project known as Nirvana Resort Homes, developed by Not What It Seems, Sundaram Bahad, having a registered office at 
16 Jalan Tangkap Air, Ulu Klang, 68000, Selangor. Okay, the marketing manager of Not What Is Sim, Sendirang Bahad, stated to, to the couple that unique and special security features will be provided within the housing estate to ensure the safety and tranquility of its residents, including CCTV cameras and electronic system to the parameter fencing. Mrs. Newly Wets was convinced as she was paranoid about the security. So in February 2019, the Newly Wets purchased a bungalow at number 5 Jalan Bengkok. Okay, not, be, not Bangkok, ah. Bangkok. Okay, Nirvana 68000, Ampang Selangor, and paid cash of 800,000 ringgit and moved into the housing estate. They bought with them personal items, for example, wedding gifts, jewelry, and cash amounting to 600,000 ringgit. So, immediately after moving in, what happened? Both couples discovered that. The mobile guards on duty were most of the time absent and never covered the area. There were no CCTV cameras in place, neither was there an electronic system to perimeter fencing. So within a week of moving in, Mr. and Mrs. Newlywed's home was broken into and robbed whilst both of them were held at nine point. So both of them actually suffered from trauma after the incident and Mrs. Newly Wet needs psychiatry treatment to calm her anxiety. For that purpose, she was admitted in the hospital for two weeks. So you are required to advise your clients on the cause or causes of action available against not what it seems Sundaram Rahat and the damages they can claim. So there are two parts of the question. You are to represent Mr. and Mrs. Newly Wet. Eh? And then subsequently, you need to establish their sources or cause of action and then identify the damages. So try to divide your uh, answer into two parts. I think quite straightforward question. Usually contract, uh, how do you go step by step? First thing first, you must know who are the parties that you represent. Then you go with whatever favorable grounds into, their, into your argument. You cannot be half-half, okay? Please bear that in mind. Because in reality, lawyers can only represent one party okay and then second part you must look at limitation period it seems okay in this question and then court of jurisdiction court of jurisdiction in contract question they will not make things too difficult for you usually they will put high court okay high court and if the incident took place or what we call the defendant resided in KL usually the court that uh, will be referred to will be KL, whereby if it is Selangor, this one also I don't know last time, eh? so now only I know, because of territorial jurisdiction, if it is Selangor, usually Sha'alam, eh? Sha eh? please remember that, eh? a lot of uh, answers sheets uh, put the Kuala Lumpur, because geographically they are nearer to that, but uh, subsequently we have this uh, uh, state, you know, um, this Ampang, Ulu Kling, all that belong to Selangor, whereby uh, Kuala Lumpur is a wilayah prescutuan. So sometimes there's a dispute in this sort of uh, uh, territorial jurisdiction. Okay, you put Sha Lama when it falls into the state of Selangor. And then the contents of the contract, you must identify whether there are terms, warranty, denominate term. Uh, and sometimes exclusional cost or time of essence cost. And then what you need to go to is uh, discharge of contract, whether it had been done. Usually they'll ask you breach, lah, breach. Or even sometimes if the question comes too difficult, then they'll argue about the frustration. Okay, then you look at the damage. Okay, damage kerosakan. 
And then other issues uh, in uh, some particular year, they'll ask you about payroll evidence rule, all that. But this is more like your uh, evidence paper rather than uh, GP paper. Okay, So you concentrate on the part of elements of contract. Elements of contract will be the one that uh, we are going to discuss later in our next slide. And then you concentrate elements of contract. Huh? These seven elements must remember. You concentrate reach, sometimes cover a bit of frustration. The damage, very important. The damage, huh? okay? Okay, so what are the elements of contract? So we go through one by one because we need to check this, you know. Okay, in this particular case, uh, you can see this couple, uh, newly wets. First, they enter into a contract with one developer called what it seems in the hard, okay, to buy a bungalow. Okay, so there is actually a contract formed by the parties already. You do not need to go on with Oh, there's a proposal, acceptance, you know, there's a consideration by the party handing over the house. You know, there's a, the, the fully paid money, 800,000 ringgit. Okay, there's a, because commercial relationship, you know, so there's an intention there. Uh, both parties uh, are more than 18 year, year old, not, not unsound of mind. You do not need to go into that. You must focus on what are the issues pertaining to the elements of contract. Usually, uh, I would say it is free consent or legality of contract will be issued, will be the question that put forward to you to answer. And commonly, commonly, I am saying commonly, uh, is the issue of free consent. Okay? Free consent means I do not enter into the contract by voluntariness, absolutely voluntariness, and by my own free will, okay? That means my consent, my free will is vitiated by some issues. So the issues here will be misread, okay? This is particularly with the elements of contract. Huh? And then if, let's say, for example, you said the elements of contract is complete already. That's why the contract is well perfected. But the terms of the contract, so remember the checklist that I'll go through with you, the six, number six. So when you say this contract is okay, then you go for breach. Okay? So we need to discuss two causes of action here. Anyone cannot get me uh, up to this point. Anyone has confusion? Because for you to form a contract first, then only you have breach, you know. Not the other way around. You have to argue misrep or fraud first, for example. Eh? Then only you go for breach. Anyone have question? Eh? Can I understand? Eh? Okay, I hope you do. Okay, come. So now, misrepresentation. Okay. So misrepresentation, you cannot just simply argue there is a misrepresentation on the part of the defendant simply by producing or oh, the brochure, the promotional brochure uh, has contained false information or you just argue that the marketing manager had provided the newly wet some false uh, representation. That's why they got induced. Not like that. You have to be systematic. Misrepresentation is one of the factors that cause the free consent. Okay, very important. Uh, this word free consent of the contract to be disrupted or being vitiated. Okay, so you start your outline of answer. Argue that free consent is an important element. This is section 10 of your contract act. If you don't mind, you just have a look at contract act and section 10, okay? And then subsequently, you said that under section 13, what does it mean by consent? 
That means two or more person agree on the same thing in the same set sense. That means I and you in the same channel. You cannot be talking about something else. I talk about something else. Then subsequently, we merge the idea. So become a mutual consent. Cannot like that. Both of us must be in the same tone. I mean, the channel, frequency, everything must be the same. Okay, so this is what it means. And then section 14. Okay, you was you must argue this point also. Cannot straight jump into misrepresentation. Huh? You will look a bit awkward. Okay, you said that free consent is vitiated by misrepresentation. Because section 14, there is a possibility that uh, the free consent will be vitiated by corrosion, undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation, and mistake. Okay, so whenever you have this sort of question, start with section 10, 13, 14, a few line of um, introduction first. Okay, then subsequently you jump to your main discussion. In this case, why did you argue misrepresentation had happened? Okay, do not use English law. Like the one the uh, negligent uh, misrepresentation, uh, fraudulent uh, misrepresentation, you argue one by one. This is not very important here, you know, because uh, Malaysia has got a contract act that is uh, statutorily codified. All the common laws, uh, things already being codified. So you use the subsection of your section 18 when you do argument. In fact, uh, fraudulent misrepresentation uh, had been codified under section 14, fraud already. And this is not the case here because nobody will want to cheat newlyweds. Only thing is maybe the thing is exaggerated. Okay, sometimes it's for the purpose to gain some benefit, but I have no intention to cheat you whatsoever. Maybe there is a guard, but the guard is just lazy. Maybe there's a CCTV, but just that the CCTV did not cover all the residential area. You get me? So these are called misrepresentations. Okay, so how you argue is, you must argue according to your section 18. Because if you read, Section 18A, B, and C. B there, there's a semicolon. And you notice the word N, A, N, D, at the end of subsection B of your section 18 contracts. So you can see that this three uh, must be fulfilled for you to establish the case. Otherwise, your opposing counsel will hit you back okay you get me so you 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 put it what you said is very simple you just say marketing manager of the defendant make positive assertions that were not true for example ensuring the plaintiff that the residential area is safe and tranquil with cctv cameras and electronic fencing parameters section 18 a Okay, this is one of the criteria already. Eh? Okay. Then, second point. Although defendant had no intent to cheat, to deceive, however, the misrepresentations had advantage the defendant as the plaintiffs had bought the bungalow. So, this is how you want to uh, establish your subsection B. Because you want to show eventually, yeah, uh, the it's a it's a it's a campaign, isn't it? It's a house selling campaign. Eventually, whatever you you say, you are trying to induce the house buyers, you know, to enter into a sell and purchase agreement. So eventually, the plaintiffs were mis misled by the misrepresentations and became prejudiced. Okay, so this is how you argue subsection B. Okay, you get me, ah. Eh? Do not copy everything and argue your uh, fraudulent, um, uh, negligent, all that. It's not, not, not so relevant because we have statute. Uh, we go for statute. This is based on legal Malaysian legal system, how we work also. Okay? And then 
Subsequently, remember there's an end there. You must see what story, I mean, not story, sorry, what kind of statement you can fit in the third criteria, the subsection C criteria. So I will put it this way. Huh? The misrepresentations by the marketing manager cause the plaintiff to make a mistake regarding to the attached security features of the bungalow, which is the subject of the agreement. Okay, I will say that because both party had exchanged ideas and then the Mrs. Newlywed did mention to the, the, the defendant that she was a bit paranoid with the uh, so-called security feature, isn't it? So this thing becomes very important. And then they made a mistake because marketing managers have said so. All the criteria A, B, C, pump, put in. So I fulfill this whole section meaning of misrepresentation. Okay? You get me, eh? Uh, and then as an effect of misrepresentation, what is the effect? What if the misrepresentation happens? Of course, free consent is vitiated. That means I enter uh, this agreement induced by your misrepresentation. The My consent, the consent given by this newly wed couple are no longer a sensible or perfect consent, you know. Some issues are there already because there are elements that is not true there. Okay, so as an effect, uh, there are two effects um, provided under section 19, uh, okay? So first thing, the plaintiff, newly wed uh, couples, can make the sell and purchase agreement voidable okay at their option very important huh? this is voidable uh, at the option of plaintiff that means they can choose okay i want to cancel i want to rescind the whole thing okay as in it never took place at all this agreement never took place at all at void okay from the beginning lah. that means voidable lah, okay voidable okay so that means they can choose whether to void it or not. Eh? Okay, get the uh, wording very clear. Eh? Second, the plaintiff can insist the contract to be performed by the defendants as if the representations made had been true. If they choose not to void the contract, if they go on, they can compel the other parties to perform. You must install the CCTV. You must, what we call, you must put on more guards. You must uh, install the electronic system in your fencing area as promised. Okay? So the defendant will need to fulfill the security features as promised. Okay? So these are the effects, you know. That's why uh, I have already highlighted all this uh, discussion that you need to put inside whatever your what we call your answer brief uh briefly outline those sections okay and subsequently the misrepresentation suffered by plaintiff could not be discovered by any means if you look carefully under your section 19 uh, there are actually two exceptions you know okay the first exception would be Representation, if it is discoverable by ordinary diligence, that means uh, if I'm the house buyer, I cannot take whatever said by the sales rep, isn't it? The, and the how, real estate agent or even the marketing manager, I cannot take it just like that, isn't it? Without doing my own homework. Okay, the due diligence here mean what if this thing could be discovered by a simple visit to the residential area. You will see there is no CCTV. You will see there's absolutely no guard at all. And then electronic fencing is not there also. So can you say that 
But of course, uh, I mean, we are not going to confuse the whole point here, but this is the arguments that you must put in which, uh, because I am for the plaintiff, uh, I will of course say no, uh, because I want to rebut that exception. So I will argue in the sense that the plaintiff could not enter and reside in that area prior to entering into the sell and purchase agreement of that bungalow. Okay, so I said no access to that area because it's a uh, get it guarded. I cannot stay there. So I cannot exercise my ordinary diligence. Of course, you can elaborate more. This is just my outline. And furthermore, the misrepresentation did induce plaintiff to enter into this contract. Okay, second exception will be if the misrepresentations, although those are false representation, but the plaintiff did not act in reliance to those statements. That means whether security is there or not, it's not my concern. I don't even care. I just like the design, the British colonial design of that particular bungalow. That's why I entered into this contract. So you cannot say subsequently, uh, this misrepresentation is one of the initiating factors towards your consent. It's not working like that. You know, It must be of the nature and character that caused inducement to the plaintiff to enter into this contract. So by looking at the fact itself, security system had been emphasized by the couples for quite a number of time. So I think this will be uh, one of the, uh, the factors why they buy the bungalow. So I submit eventually two exceptions under section 19 is not applicable. Okay, and then we go, what are the checklist left? Section 34, Specific Relief Act. So Specific Relief Act, why you need to talk about Specific Relief Act is because if misrepresentation is void at the option, voidable at the option, if they choose to void, that means you are rescind the contract, isn't it? Rescind, uh, that means you cancel, you cancel the whole contract uh, as a whole, you know. And then subsequently, uh, there is a remedy called restitution or restore the benefits, you know. It's a specific performance because whatever the defendant took the money, uh, need to return. So the plaintiff also, uh, the house, isn't it, need to return. Something like that. So the court must be granted the power to do so. This is provided under your section 34. Okay, rescission may be adjudged by court when uh, contract is voidable or terminable by the plaintiff. Go brief on that. Okay, and if the plaintiff opt to rescind the contract pursuant to Section 65 Contract Act, the defendant needs not perform any promises it made therein. Under Section 66, plaintiff and defendant are bound to restore the benefits rest or, uh, uh, receive okay that means to say the plaintiff are required to return the bungalow and then the defendant is required to return the purchase money okay as simple as that okay misrepresentation do not go and uh, academically argue section 76 don't waste your time cover this will be enough Okay, otherwise, because anyhow, section 70 cannot be used also uh, in your misrepresentation. Okay, uh, don't get confused. Huh? If let's say you affirm this contract, that means to say you said this misrepresentation, never mind, I can accept that. Then the other way to go for is to sue the what it seems in the heart for breach of fundamental terms of contract because the contract is self-completed already if you ignore whatever misrepresentation that means you affirm affirm so that the other half, your free consent is already clear then only you move to your uh, breach of contract so breach of contract probably you need to discuss section 40 47 uh, 74 76 and section 66 okay for you to establish breach of contract, first thing first, uh, there must be a valid and existing contract. Okay, if you go for misrepresentation, but usually in practice, they pick both. Uh, but uh, looking at the whole thing uh, by right, 
let's say misrepresentation is that there is no contract at all, you know, because the elements of the contract uh, is not set of, satisfied, okay? So breach of contract, you must have the following ingredients. First, there must be a valid and existing contract between the parties. So I will put one line, unarguably, plaintiffs had entered into SPA with defendant to buy the bungalow. And second, plaintiff partner must clear his duty. Whatever contractual terms that he has to uh, fulfill or the role that he has to play uh, inside that contract, he must have done it already. Which means to say, I will submit that 800000 purchase price fully paid. And third element, the defendant breached the fundamental terms of the contract, okay? And as the result of the breaches, plaintiffs have been put to loss and damage. So, valid and existing contract, first, line, first element. Second, contractual uh, obligation done by the plaintiff, breach on part of defendant, for damage. Four criteria must be highlighted before you go into your uh, what we call fundamental terms, less important term, etc. That one is not so important because anyhow, uh, anyhow, uh, in this sort of question, uh, will you will you argue that uh, security features are not important term? A bit unlikely, isn't it? Because you are for the plaintiff, you know. You are going to say by hook or by crook. Security terms are of the party's opinion or the party's contemplation are among the fundamental terms. This is how you're going to submit. Uh. Uh, I will say so because I don't want to see there's a deviation of position. I am for the plaintiff. I go all out for the plaintiff. Okay. So Chingit development uh, against Dapa Heights. I'm sure you know this case. I will say that the security features are fundamental terms that are important to the parties in forming the contract. In fact, plaintiff made it clear to the defendant that they needed the said security features for the bungalow or residential area. Otherwise, they are so scared to move in. Okay, so this is why it is important. Eh? Mm. And then, uh, ah, I was using the section, section 40. Okay, I would say they breached. Why? You cannot simply say they didn't do, isn't it? All of us know they didn't install the CTB. They didn't hire guards, isn't it? You cannot say in layman term. You must say why in your legal perspective, how the uh, defendant breached, ah, uh, I will use section 40, okay? Defendant is said to have breached the terms when it refused to perform or disable himself from performing his promise in its entirety, okay? So that as an effect, the what we call the plaintiff can put an end to the contract, okay? So what else are the effect? Hmm. Section 66, contract act here and section 76 are among the effect if you want to uh, say that there is a breach of contract but of course claiming damage like, is also one of the effect but what if it is going to the root I mean there is a total failure of consideration okay usually in in this uh, circumstance uh, you can see that the gist of the whole purchase, uh, sell and purchase agreement is about buying bungalow, okay? Buying bungalow. You have the bungalow, you have a place to stay, but now the problem is the security features that's supposed to supplement the residential areas is inadequate, okay? There is no total failure of consideration, you know. That means to say, actually, if you are looking at 800,000 ringgit. This is how you advise your client also. 800,000 ringgit. Probably 700,000 of your money will go to the bungalow. How is it built? The renovation, whatever. Okay. The landscaping, all that outside. It's 700,000 there, you know. 100,000 is probably the, the one that enhanced the value of the bungalow, i.e. the securities features. You get me? Uh? 
So the bungalow is already there. You cannot say that there's a total failure of consideration on part of defendant because the defendant did something. Huh? The defendant did something. Okay. Uh, does it matter if uh, SBA did not specifically contend this fundamental term? Uh, SBA usually uh, in Malaysia is a statutory agreement. If you are looking at this sort of, uh, uh, it's usually is a cross G, la. it's G punya, uh, schedule G punya agreement. So usually it won't contain this sort of uh, security feature, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because contract uh, does not necessarily written contract, you know. Sometimes the uh, oral contract can be emitted, you know, or even because nowadays they have evidence, isn't it, from the promotional brochure. So easier for the court to establish that there is an existence of collateral contract here. Okay? Do not do not argue this issue also, uh, because uh, later on you get, uh, I mean, you are too much, so much so uh, going to other direction. Okay, so argue that there is no total failure of consideration. So rescission that means return the money lah, to each other and return the bungalow to each other cannot be done. Section seventy six also carries the similar meaning, unless unless ah, defendant did not even build one brick lah. That means they still. I mean, the um, tapak kosong, lah. nothing was built, lah. not even the piling was done. So, can, lah. Ah, okay, so cannot, lah. in fact. Lah. So, and then what you need to do is, the plaintiff can claim damage under your section 74 of your contract act, subjected to the test of remoteness, okay? Uh, actually, this part, lah, they ask you in the question uh, B, I think. Uh, okay, you can claim damage so long the damage is within the two limbs of this uh, section 74. Okay, in the assessment of damage, the plaintiff must also take positive step to mitigate loss. Okay, whenever there is um, there is a breach by other party, there is some mistake done by other party, opposing party defendant. Okay, the plaintiff cannot let the, the damages, the hemorrhage flowing just like that. You need to guard your side also. You cannot take advantage. Okay, la, my business not so good. La. I let the damages free flow so I can sue the defendant for more money. Cannot like that. You have to mitigate loss. Okay, so this is Kapata-san timber case. And then subsequently... uh. If uh, what we call uh, other factors is like interest, uh, the tax will take into consideration, but not so much of your uh, uh, main discussion. Uh. The main discussion will be put in whatever section that I told you, dismiss one by one, choose a stand, what you need to go. And same, uh, apply to your misrepresentation. Not too hard after all. Uh, is if, you, if you get your flow of writing well, Okay, uh, I have seen some uh, answers that have written who bears the burden of proof and uh, what else? Uh? Bear burden of proof la, and then subsequently uh, what is the meaning of cause of action, Limkian against Chukun, all that. Do not write. Leh. Do not write because I think uh, what we call the, the thing uh, no, we should quote section 70, 74 if you look at 76, uh, that's why now uh, it, it's better for you to uh, flip through, you know, flip through this uh, contract act rather than just reading from this book. It's different. Eh? Okay. 76 uh, writes it clearly. Uh, party rightfully rescinding contract entitled to compensation. Okay. When you say rescind, Rescind means you cancel, you uh how to say you void the whole contract, you know. This is what me what it means by rescind, you know. When you terminate, uh, terminate means okay, the contract, that's it. Uh, you do not need to perform your further obligation. For example, the defendant need not to install CTV, uh, what we call the hiring security guard. You just pay, pay me whatever damage that I suffer. Don't do anything, I'm not interested, whatever you your performance, okay, just don't do. 
but the contract, the bungalow will stay with me. Something like that. Okay, you get me, eh? Mm. And then the what other damage? Special damages will be the purchase price. Okay, usually, usually, in your answer or in real life practice also, we put in every single bills. Okay, get me. Mm, uh, it's not the word maximize the. Uh, Okay, we are in favor of our plaintiff action because eventually the court will decide, okay? And you must plead accordingly. So, uh, standard of practice, plead everything, lah, plead everything. Special damages you put, purchase price 800, all lost already. And loss of personal items like the one, uh, wedding gift, money, cash, all that, okay? 600K. And uh, Mrs. Newly Wed also admit to admitted to hospital, isn't it? So claim the hospital bill. And it seems that both parties suffered from a rope, isn't it? Uh, I mean, robbing, robbery. And then uh, subsequently, they have some sort of psychological trauma. This one, arguably very hard to claim, lah, but the still, uh, still uh, I mean, you have to plead whatever that come into your mind. You cannot miss. You don't plead, you don't get. Okay, you plead, there is a chance. Okay, so be in your view, or on the facts of this case, your clients be entitled to pursue a claim for general damages. So the question very specific, huh? general damages. So out of these, you know, right, there's two specific damages and general damages. These are the heading of damage. Damage, uh, no S, means what is the kerosakan, what is the kerugian that had been suffered by the plenty. Damages means dollar and cent. Okay, dollar and cent, berapa, berapa ringgit. Okay, so S there means uh, money lah, money. Okay, so general damages, how do you come by it? You must tell the examiners that you are aware what is general damages? So then general, general damages cannot take into consideration those that is readily quantified by the court. For example, the 600000 that he got robbed, the hospital bill that is actually stated inside the invoice cannot. Lah. So general damages should have, uh, should have referred to psychological trauma suffered by both plaintiff. This heading of damage that's why uh, you use word by word must be very careful. Uh. Damages money. Damage is kerugian. It's not quantifiable. Okay. And to be assessed by thought. Okay. So you must think back. General damages here is the psychological trauma. First thing first, you must ask yourself, is this contract pertaining to what? It is pertaining to buy a house. Nothing to do whether you are happy. How do I know? How do I inside the, the contract or I do not miss make miss I, I mean any representation to you that after you stay in this house, you'll be happy forever. God not like that. Uh, unless you are staying with uh, Peter Pan, isn't it? Uh, cannot. Uh. I mean, there's no guarantee of happiness whatsoever, you know. There's no guarantee whether you have some sort of psychological or emotional disturbance after staying inside this uh, bungalow, you know, no matter how luxurious it is. Uh. Okay, so non-pecuniary loss is not claimable in commercial contract. This is the general rule because the commercial rule uh, commercial contract usually exchange of profit la. cannot ensure you are satisfied or you are proud of what you are doing I, I mean uh, I cannot guarantee your feeling la, after uh, completion of this sort of contract okay exceptional condition uh, condition will be if the contract is for pleasure purpose okay if I want to uh, enter a contract with you Okay, uh, to bring you to Turkey, for example. Uh, this becomes one of the terms that I have to ensure that you enjoy the trip. 
Okay, not like missing the flight. The hotel also given is a not so good one like that. Spoil your experience. And some of your honeymoon are like that. Yes, it is just impossible. This sort of non-pecuniary loss claimable. Okay, but then you have to go one step uh, of this general rule. Because the parties, newlyweds, did mention that they are paranoid over the safety features. So, uh, merging all that together, and some more you are for them, you know, you must use Section 74 Contract Act, which had actually codified Hadley against Baxendale case. So, you have Lim 1 and Lim 2. First is ordinary losses, which arise naturally in usual course of event. Okay, so this is not ordinary loss arise naturally in the course of usual event. In the, uh, the so-called, what does it mean ordinary loss will be, okay, security not good, lead to theft or robbery, lead to monetary loss. Yes, this is ordinary loss. You can see that already, surely happen. Lah, okay. Second limb is the one that fit in to general damages because it is something extraordinary. Okay, but both party knew about that. that. That is called within reasonable contemplation of parties. Because marketing manager, before you go and tell this sort of security feature, the newlyweds did inform him that she was paranoid, she got anxiety, etc. I really need the securities in order for me to stay in the house calmly. Okay, calmly. So, this is your argument. Huh? So it fall into the second limb. Second, be specific, yeah. Be specific. Okay. So these are extraordinary laws within contemplations of the parties. So you argue with this factual uh corroborative uh statement. Okay. So both plaintiff defendant well aware Mrs. Newly wet is paranoid about security. So it is not surprised that she suffer from nervous breakdown after the security breaches. So conclusion, general damages is most likely claimable. Okay. So during examination, uh, I will suggest you to write slightly more than what I wrote now because uh, this answer is uh, freshly baked by today and yesterday. I do not keep any uh, old answer anymore. So I wrote it a bit rushed. Lah, okay. And... Uh, I want you to see this statement of claim. Okay. Let's just wait. Huh? Statement of claim here. Okay. Statement of claim. Can you all see my statement of claim? You can see it. You are with me? Okay, can see. Uh, okay, this is a statement of claim. I don't think I want to put it in PowerPoint. Uh, so later on, I'll send in the group. Hopefully, it is beneficial. Okay, first, you must memorize the whole structure of this statement of claim. How to write. Okay, so usually, uh, usually, I mean, uh, I could be wrong, but usually it will be in the high court. Okay, write in full uh, capital letter. In the High Court of Malaya at where? Shah Alam. Cannot write in a small letter, small like that, like that. Cannot. Okay? Please put in capital form. In the state of Slango, Daru Esan, Homa, Malaysia. So this is the letters format. Huh? And then civil suit number. Then you kosongkan dash 2023. Start writing 2023 because your exam... Uh, the question usually this year one, okay? And next, you write between, between who are the parties, okay? First, plaintiff is Mr. Newly Wets. Do not write them together. It's not allowed at all. Mr. and Mrs. Newly Wet. Wrong, eh? And then you must put one NRIC. You put a fictitious one. It shows that you understand, okay? And then you put second, uh, plaintiff, Mrs. Newly Wet, NRIC, why, why, why? If, why would you, I would definitely memorize 
in this way. Uh. And then you must put three dots, uh, not more than that. Uh. Um, to be honest, the court is very particular on this because uh, the historical development of our profession, uh, we are supposed to be a clergy, you know. That means we are clerk, la. okay? We are clerk, but we are legal drug, uh, legal clerk. So you must be very careful with your annotations, you know, okay? And your defendant, okay? Not what is Sim Sundaram Bahad. Okay, check your spelling, everything, uh, because sometimes, because I will make mistake also. Uh, once there's a mistake, you have to amend. Susa betul. So cannot. Uh, so make sure that you do not make uh, so-called a blunder inside your statement of claim, especially during this examination. And then you go with your statement of claim. Okay, statement of claim. So all this structure, please memorize by heart. Huh? All that you can see, I use capital letter. And you must have adequate spacing. Huh? Adequate spacing. Okay. And then, uh, this is Bangkok, huh? not Bangkok. You see, just now. Okay. The first, then you start with your first paragraph. First paragraph always start with introduction of the parties, the plaintiff first. You must either introduce your plaintiff as a company or an individual. Only these two. You don't write Malaysian citizen also, never mind. Not a problem at all because your NIC is up there already. So first plaintiff is an individual because service is problem, you know, later. If you uh, wrongly write, I mean, uh, company, you won't change like that. Okay? Put it Put it as individual whose residential address is at da, da, da. this one don't write dot 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 if you have adequate that's why you need you need highlighter from the beginning because uh your yellow color one uh, you can highlight whatever address then you can refer back you know retrieve those information inside here okay and then the second plaintiff is also an individual. Okay, whose residential address is at number five Jalan Bengkok. Okay, Bengkok, huh? Bengkok Nirwana six eight zero zero Ampang Slango. Right. Uh, as much as you have uh, provided. If they do not provide number X Jalan ABC straight away, come up with one address Batu Li Labu whatever. Okay, just write. Don't leave it empty. So at all material time, so what are the nexus? The first and second plaintiff are married couple and they are, they are a pair of bungalow purchasers. I would say that they bought bungalow. Lah. Okay. And then subsequently, you uh, remember uh, in between, uh, don't jumble out all your lines together. Uh, you must space, you know, this is in real life also, 1.5 paragraph spacing. So kosongkan satu, line for each of your statement of claim. Look neat. Look neat. But of course, you might must write neatly as well. Lah, huh? Okay, so spacing are uh, important. The defendant is a private limited company registered under Companies Act 2016. Just go with 2016. No need to go with 1965, subsequently amended by all that. No need, no need. Not very important. Okay, and having its registered office at Number 16, Jalan Tangkap Bahay, Ulu Klang. So this one is also provided by the fact itself. Whatever facts provided, please write it in. Uh. So at material time, the defendant is the developer of housing projects. Okay. After you have introduced the parties, then you introduce what is the story based on the chronological order. So you will say that the plaintiff and defendant enter into a contract to purchase one unit of bungalow in one Nirana Resorts home. So this is also provided inside the uh, what we call the, the question. And it was the terms of the contract and an all representation because usually this is how we practice that. If we are not so sure whether this is uh, either one, we plead both but in a directed manner. And then all at least we plead. Then then during the trial, the things can go through. Okay. So 
and and all misrepresentations on part of the defendant uh, inter alia or you can use among others same what is the problem here so the housing estate will ensure with safety and tranquility of its resident this one uh, all these are uh, is readily available inside your question do not change your own uh, into your own words uh, because running out of time just write whatever whatever inside you will not uh, go too wrong okay cctv will be installed in the residential area uh, electronic system as to the parameter fencing mobile guards as well okay because this is one of the complaint okay so in compliance with so you can see the formulation uh, if i want to click misrepresentation i will set all these one, two, three, four are misrepresentation. If I want to plead for breach of contract, then it becomes a terminal. Ah, you see, in compliance with the terms of the contract, the plaintiff had duly performed the following paid 800,000. Okay. Remember the ingredient of a uh, breach of contract? So after the delivery of the bungalow unit, what happened? Plaintiff moved in. They were the discovered immediately the following. Huh? All that not available. Lah. The CCTV not there. Electronic system is not there. And then uh, mobile guard is not there, etc. And due to the said breaches, the plaintiff bungalow was broken into and robbed whilst plaintiff were held at nine point. So this one also I copy bullet bullet from the question. And then subsequently I said the second plaintiff also suffered from anxiety required psychiatry treatment admitted for hospital uh two weeks okay so this is how you draft your story but relatively i think uh for exam because i have been one year i mean uh, not one year nine months plus in practice so i've seen a lot more complicated this is relatively easy already so therefore the plaintiff have been put to losses and expenses and has thereby suffered damages so particular of damages, this is for special damages. Usually, uh, usually to save time, you do not want to calculate. Uh, you put in one thing, legal fee, hospital bill, uh, like for example, the thought, medical reports, police report, sketch plan. You put one there. Then you do have to calculate straight away, put one RMY like that so this is uh saving your time a lot no? so you put in whatever you want to claims purchase price 800k personal items 600k hospital x and then total up y you come to the next what are the prayers okay the prayers and the plaintiff claims a special damage just must remember uh, don't miss the word Okay, in the sum of RMY, general damages, because this is the heading of damage and damages money. Okay, general damages to be assessed by court, of course, and interest costs such further and other relief as this honorable court deems fit and proper to grant. These three is universally same. Okay, my advice to be safe in examination, do not plead for rescission of contract. La. I want to plead a declaration, you know, for this uh, sales and purchase agreement to be void. Yes, I know in practice it could be, but later if you are wrong, la, wow, then your whole statement of claim becomes, um, I mean, kantoi, man. so not good. Okay, and then dated this, put your exam date. Start memorizing 6th day of November 2023. Sign, uh, please sign with your whatever fancy signature you have. Please sign and then dot, 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 solicitors for the plaintiffs. Okay, plaintiffs here. Okay, and then this statement of claim is filed by your firm's name. Think of one, uh, don't just write uh, what we call uh, ABC, AB, and then think of your own name. La. You do have a name, isn't it? Put the one la, uh, or Mrs. La, or Chi and Ko, la, something like that. The solicitors for the plaintiff whose address for service is at 
your house address uh, if you are if you are keen or you, you can memorize better and put your phone okay and email please put all that information I think you can score okay you can score okay now we go to where, ah yeah okay we go to second question top question can see uh, uh, the question can see or not eh? okay question two is about top so contract play around with your contract x uh, please uh. so contract contract x and sometimes a little bit with specific relief act because it's provided for a reason and uh, usually usually thought uh, you play with your cla uh, cla because you want to look at the assessment of damage whether it's estate la, dependency or personal injury claim it's all inside okay you have to refer to the specific statute okay we go with uh what is the question about eh? John Lennon seeks your advice on 31st December 2017 in respect of a road accident. So John says to you, I live in Bukit Labu, Serban. The accident occurred on 1st of uh, January. So New Year 2014, the mad accident near Uptown Seremban 2. So when they see you more than three years, uh, please, uh, sometimes important. Uh, so on New Year's Eve, my wife Yoko Ono and I went to Uptown for dinner and drinks. I was riding my Harley Davidson bearing registration number NAT999. We had a couple of drinks but have no problem holding my drinks. So at around 2 a.m., we headed home. We were both wearing our helmets and Yoko was riding Helia. We reached the junction at Jalan S2B11 near Papa Ridge, Seremban 2. I stopped to ensure traffic was clear and when it was safe to proceed, I turned left into the main road. Luckily, 5 to 10 seconds later, car bearing registration number NZ666, which was traveling from the my right to left on the main road, collided into my motorbike from the rear. I do remember hearing a loud horn, followed by the sound of screeching tires. The next thing I remember is that I was taken to hospital. I was later told that Yoko Ono was killed instantly. So I was coma for two weeks. One month after regaining consciousness, I was discharged from the hospital. And then subsequently, they introduced who are them. I was 45 years old at the time of the accident. And my wife was 40 at the time of her death. I'm a lawyer by profession and do conveyancing work only. Okay. I intend to retire at the age of 66. Okay. So my wife was a salaried accountant earning 15000 a month at the time of her death. I was unable to work for six months, which includes the time in hospital. My average net Money income as a sole proprietor was 18,000 ringgit. I used to spend 4,000 on myself. When I did not, I, when I did go back to work, I was not able to sit for long and could not go out to canvas work from my regular clients who are mainly developers. My income has gone down significantly to around 6,000 ringgit a month. I also un I also go for C physiotherapy once a month. So I brought along these documents for your reference. Police report, okay, the police report of that driver, the 1st January 2014, medical report, death certificate, police sketch plan and key. So what are you going to do? You are to comprehensively advise the possible cost dash causes of action that arise out of the accident uh, okay that occurred on uh, 1st of january 2014 as described above your advice should also indicate any defense as to liability available to any person or persons identified as prospective defendant or defendant so two part eh? first they ask you to represent john lennon 
So what is his course of action available? And second thing, you must predict also what is the defendants. Okay, what are the defense that is able to rise by the defendants? Okay, so first thing first, huh? e okay, this one we have a look later, huh? Okay, first thing first. So how do you approach this question? Same thing, you must uh, you must know who are the parties. John Lennon. Estate of Yoko Ono, possible, okay? And there's a George Bass here because clearly uh, you have to find George Bass from here, the police report made by the driver of NZ666 is signed George Bass here. So this is your defendant, you know. Sometimes, uh, really, uh, I mean, uh, those... Uh, uh, I mean, the question paper is designed in a way that you have to be very careful with your documentation. In fact, when you are practice uh, as a lawyer next time, you have to be careful with all this documentation as well. But uh, uh, the only thing is you do not have luxuries of time. Lah, so you have to go through all this very quick. So mark all this important with your highlighter. Okay, very important. So these are the two versions of stories here. And uh, the injury suffered inside the medical report, but not much important issue here because they are not asking us to claim for dependency claim. Okay, so NAT 999 hit from back, isn't it? Because the story by John Lennon said that there is a horn that's a breaking the tire uh, screeching sounds. Okay, but did you see any uh, breaking or signs of deceleration? So it's not marked here, okay? It's not marked here, probably. So this is the place of accident. So probably hit from back, lah. okay? And uh, this is your uh, push. Parties, limitation, period. Limitation, there is some issues here huh? because dependency over three years already cannot claim. So causes of action, likely, if let's say accident case, negligence, lah. Okay, it could not be any other thing. Road traffic accident, surely negligence. Okay, and what is the usual uh, sort of first instance? Road traffic accident, you must know that regardless of how high is the claim, the court will be session court. And then the place is decided based on the forum of convenience. Uh, in favor to the defendant. See where the defendant stay. Again, you have to see back this. You see, I was heading home to Vision Heights, Seremban Hu. So, our defendant, Josh Bayes, presumably stay inside this uh, Vision Heights, Seremban Hu. Okay? So, that's why we put Seremban as our court. Lah. And then, the types of claim. What are the types of claim that uh, uh, the question asks you to do. Usually three types, personal injury claims. I think I have one YouTube uh, channel. There's a one top class. If you're interested, you can go and have a look. I discuss in depth. Uh, estate claim, dependency claim. So our SOC uh, asks us to draft only personal injury claim. So it must concern only John Lennon. Nothing to do with Yoko Ono. Yoko Ono unfortunately passed away. Uh, the beneficiaries or the statutory dependent can claim through estate claim or dependency claim. But this is not a question. Lah. So we do not need to uh, uh, go further about that. Okay, And then the damages awarded by court and what other? Defense. Okay. So motor vehicle accident. Eh? So John Lennon uh, plaintiff, George Bass, best defendant, cause of action, negligence in motor vehicle accident. Okay. Because negligence is a very general thought, you know. Okay. We have negligence in uh, industrial accident. We have negligence in professional setting. For example, involving medical line or solicitor's negligence. So you must put 
uh, as far as your answer is concerned, try to be specific. Okay, eh? Eh, wait. Uh, are you all still with me? Uh? Suddenly my my slide jam. Uh. Is it okay? Uh? Eh? Can you still see my slides uh, and hear my voice? Ah, okay. Can see, ah. Uh. So, when you want to talk about negligence, you must fulfill what is the elements, elements of negligence. Very important, ah. Uh. Just quickly, lah, uh, because you have not much time. Four elements of negligence. First, duty of care. Second, the said duty of care must have been breached. Okay. Number three, causation. The breach caused damage to the uh, plaintiff. And then fourth is the damage. Okay, I should have, uh, I should have uh, put it into, okay, something like that. Okay, so first thing first, you must argue duty of care. Duty of care, how do you prove there's a relationship in between the parties? Why do you say Josh Best did owe some responsibility towards John Lennon and her disease. Why? Why did you say so? So in usual circumstances, you do not need to argue with your Kaparao against Dickman. No need. Kaparao and Dickman, uh, uh, maybe some of you may know, so, is um, for pure economic loss, you know. It's for some, usually talk, talk involve physical harm means somebody must get hurt okay somebody must have get injured first hand it's not something like just monetary loss uh kaparo against statement is something to do with uh, negligence misstatement of uh, one particular advice and then leading to financial loss okay if you're a lawyer uh, not to teach you wrongly lah. You can argue that why you have me negligent. This is Kaparo against Dickman category. So you have to fulfill proximity, possibility, fair, just, and reasonable to impose this duty of care. Whereby, uh, in usual circumstances, uh, okay, usual circumstances, for example, uh, you just state that actually, uh, this sort of relationship, root users, uh, Okay, doctor, patient, uh, this one uh, already established by the court, you know. So you just use neighborhood principle, Donahue against Stevenson, enough. Because they are proximate to each other, okay? And then usually the court will draw analogy. Analogy means similar case, okay? I take it and use it as my sample model. Because you must know that court, we do not have an act. We do not have a statute that codify everything we refer to precedence we refer to common law principles okay uh janani asks employer employee negligence we can do yes uh it's not statutory it's uh how you say uh, there's a statutory you must have a specific statute that impose the uh duty of care hmm if you're not aware with that particular statute, do not say so. Lah. Okay? And, uh, okay, so this is how you establish duty of care. So use neighborhood principles. Uh, most of the time will be sufficient. Do not go one step. Kaparo against Dickman, Batu Gemas case, all that. No need. Okay. And then subsequently, you must say that it has breached the duty the, of care. The defendant has breached the duty of care. This is by fallen short of the standard of care that's supposed to impose on him. Okay. How to say that I don't care you enough just because I, I don't answer your call. This is metaphor. Lah. I don't answer your call. You know, I don't reply your message. It doesn't mean that I don't care for you. There must be a comparative standard, isn't it? Objective standard. 
means other people's other boyfriends did also similar things as me what so this is how you must think you know okay so the standard of care in root users are I mean, among the root users are based on reasonable skill driver test. Means you don't have to be a Ferrari driver for you to achieve this sort of standard. Okay. So we use the case of KR Taxi against Zahara. So the breaches by the defendant, the uh, extract from the fact, first, don't, don't write failure to what we call keep a uh, proper outlook. These are just guidelines, you know, you must factually tally with your circumstance, you know. Otherwise, you will seem that your answer is just uh, premeditated. Mm. That means to say you have half far some sort of uh, script and then you put um, the, the, the answers inside. So it, it, it will create a, a, a negative impression on your good self. So first thing, be clear with the fact uh, failure to keep himself alert because he's a medical and intern on call 24 hours in the hospital. So he had failed to keep himself alert and conscious while driving. I will put it to hammer him. Lah. So second, failure to brake or slow down his car sufficiently to avoid the collision. Why I use this statement is because Sean cannot brake hit from behind. Okay? Third, is failure to manage or control his car to avoid hitting the plaintiff. That means he has not controlled his way well lah, because the route is quite big. What he should have, he should have this one. What avoid what? Okay, and then failure to keep proper outlook when encroaching into the route junction near Papa Ridge. By right, when you reach a junction, formulate with your own words and also, uh, like I say, this is just a freshly baked answer. Eh? You must, based on whatever you can copy from the uh, facts you add in. By right, you should have stopped and look around in case there's a passerby. How you know? Usually, standard of practice to drive in Malaysia, we do slow down when there's a huge junction. Uh, otherwise, one lorry car will just like that. Lah. Mm. So causation, the said breaches were factual and legal causation to the accident, uh, accident in which John Lennon has sustained personal injuries while his wife was dead. The plaintiff had suffered from damage but for, use the word, but for the negligence of the plaintiff. If the defendant is not acting negligently, I will not, the plaintiff will not suffer any loss or damage. This is how it called as causation. There must be a link, an unbroken link, which is not the case here. Lah. Some, some case we took, ah, wow, so many parties involved, we don't even know who are the pieces. There's a break of chain, but usually the question given is, there's no break of chain of causation. That means the Effect and also the cost is usually one culprit. Okay, so no breach. Uh, no, uh, the causation here is complete. Lah. I mean, the chain is complete. Okay, and as a result of the the what we call the uh accident, the plaintiff will put into loss and damage. Okay, so you submit that the the damage will be discussed in question two B later because you have to. Go to the second part. Second part. You mean negligence of the defendants in the last last slide means which one? Ah? Uh, Mr. Sarawanan, can you get your yeah. question? No, no, go to the next slide. The four elements negligence. Go to the next slide. Ah uh, yeah, look at the causation number three. Causation? Number three. Element number three. Yeah, the causation. Here is your failure below. to manage causation. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the last sentence, the plaintiff had suffered from damage, but for the negligence of the plaintiff, he should be defendant, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I said to you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. This is a freshly baked. Please do. Uh, I, 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 I love your attention and concentration in class. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so actually, 
on the parts of defendants that he acted negligent that caused damage to the plaintiff. Uh, this is correct. But for, uh, but for. Okay? Effect and causation, uh, but for. <laughs> Thank you for your reminder. Okay, so this one we have no issue. Eh? You must argue four elements. Eh? One, duty of care, breach, causation, damage. Complete. Eh? That is your complete cause of action for negligence. From what I have seen, there's only one cause of action in this uh, question. Hopefully you get, lah. you can score, you know, I mean, uh, this sort of question. Okay, then you must answer the next part of the same question. What are the defenses that could be raised by the defendant? Because sometimes we we need to an anticipate what are the uh, next move going to counter by our defendant. So uh, I think CLP is quite practical. Okay, so George Bass here could raise two possible defenses. Number one, Contributory negligence, section 12 CLA. This one you must not miss at all. Uh. Every year, same only. Contributory negligence. So why do you say so? Uh, contributory negligence must define first. It is just a partial defense. It will never cause the defendant to void of his liability. It will just meant to reduce the quantum of damages, reduce the amount that should be paid by the defendant. That's it. Okay, this is how contributory negligence works. Huh? So from the fact given, uh, now why you said so, you must say it already. John Lennon was dry, driving under intoxication after drinking. Okay, he could have driven the motor car uh, negligently without paying sufficient attention. There's a missing word here. What was the coming of defendant's car when he was turning left in Papa Ridge Junction? So you see back the, the sketch plan here and then you try to draft your own words. By right, you should have see whether George Bass is coming from here or not, correct? Just because somehow you are drinking under some alcohol influence, uh, you just turn. Uh, you contribute lah to whatever loss that you have suffered. Okay? Get me? So this is how you go by it. Uh, go by it. And if contributory negligence is successfully pleaded, now you are assuming, because not necessarily, because it still depends on the evidence given by the... Uh, we have called one, one expert called road traffic accident uh, expert. They will assess how the accident happened and they will formulate their opinion. So it depends all on evidence. That if it is pleaded successfully, the amount of damages claimed by John Lennon might be cut to 50% as enshrined in Go Bang Seng against Do Bin Do La. Okay, I put the maximum amount uh, because I'm advising my client here. Okay. And agony of moment. Okay, other than that, uh, if it is not so much so evidence, uh, inside the text do not plead uh, like mechanical defect uh, all that uh, agony of moment means the the defendant could not stop you know it happens too fast it cannot take any positive or evasive step in order to avoid that collision so this was corroborated with the sketch plan and also actually from the police report made by the plaintiff also he hear horn what? And then subsequently cannot not manage to break. So this is how I submit la, to defense. Okay. Agony of moment. Don't write everything under the okay, uh, the, the list. La, susa. Huh? You beat every thought, oh no breach of uh, uh duty, uh something like that. It's just not so relevant. You are wasting a lot of time. Just split the important one and move on. Uh I must repeat myself to you. Huh? If Let's say, for example, if you have reached question 2B, then you left with one hour of time, you start with your statement of claim first for the top. Don't go and write 2B anymore. Just write statement of claim quickly. Okay, quickly. Uh, what is the next question about? The next question is... Uh, okay. 
B, if you come to conclusion there is a course of action available, you are to advise on the various item of damages claimable as a result of the accident, explaining carefully how such damages are assessed by the court. You are advised on the principles relevant to the assessment of damage. So, like I say, if you still here and you've got one hour left, please, this one, you see this or not? 20 marks. At least you get 10. This one, uh, how good you write, uh, they'll give you 7, 8. Uh. The marking in uh, CLP is one of the strictest uh, I've seen. Uh, okay? It's one of the strictest. Okay? And, um, yeah, we go. Uh, okay. Outline. There are few claims that the plaintiff could make. A personal injury claim for John Lennon. A state claim that for Yoko Ono, the deceased. And a dependency claim. Uh, because this is just uh, my, my work here. I want you to outline a little bit under section 7, sub rule 5 CLA. It could not be claimed. Time bar already. More than three years. So, statutory dependent. The son cannot claim. The husband cannot claim. Okay? Cannot claim. Huh? This one. So, mark it off. So, personal injuries uh, claim. We start one by one. Huh? What are the claims that can be claimed by John Lennon? Because he is the one that suffered from personal injuries. So medical expenses, a government hospital, he has been staying in a hospital Seremban, is claimable. Okay, claimable. So you must copy from the fact lah, what the injuries, the bone fractures, the tibia fibula fractures, all that. You must write down a little bit, is claimable. So he also got the crutches what, to ambulate. So it is also claimable. Okay, three malai cases huh? and transportation fee if any incur yes can cost of care during uh, hospitalization uh, you can argue your fact here because he need to walk around and probably there's a there's an attention towards this sort of cost of care okay nursing uh, people will come and help him okay this one can claim and pre-trial loss of earning uh, you write down the salary Six times eighteen thousand. If you do not have time, just write equal to R M Y A or B or C also can X or Y. Okay, do not calculate. It's not a mathematical test. And other cost of uh expenses, medical reports, police report, all claimable. Okay, legal fee also claimable. And general this one uh special damages uh highlight a little bit. It's all tender by invoices and receipts quantifiable okay if you need do not go deep okay then you move to the uh, personal injuries general uh, damage first pain and suffering multiple injuries at various sites stated in medical report okay putting him in excruciating pain and suffering throughout his day of accident until now and uh, to, to be honest, this is the word that usually used by the lawyer uh, to make the pain and because it cannot be short time, isn't it? Uh, pain and suffering, if you want to claim slightly more, you want the court to assess more, uh, this is the proper term. Until now, still suffer. Until now, you see the way that the, the plaintiff walk also not stable somehow rather like. Okay, loss of amenities, could not enjoy the life as he used. He said that he cannot sit long, isn't it? And cannot move around to socialize with his developer's client. This one also because of injuries. What? Otherwise, he would have probably drinking with uh, the developers already. So this is loss of amenities. And you do not need to focus too much on the case law. So long you, you get young Sabia. Limpochu. Young Sabi, I love the name. I don't know why. So I keep on using the name during the examination. Uh, and Limpochu. Limpochu was a very famous... Uh, uh, she was not the real plaintiff here. Limpochu, the Baochu. Uh, this seems to be like a Hong Kong, Hong Kong star name. Uh, my mother's time. Okay. And loss of future earning. Uh, loss of future and earning. You have to look at your section 28. A 
subroot 2, subroot C, subroot 1. I have actually one trick to tell you. Huh? You when you get this uh statute, huh? You when you when you when you you will be first distributed with statute, isn't it? You you do this this thing. A mark over the important uh section, like section 28, section 7, section 8, sure will have right. You easier for you to flip through, you know. Because those time actually not your starting time, you know. If you could have done so, uh, you are ahead of time compared to others. Okay? Please do so. And John Lennon's salary uh, had actually substantially reduced after the accident. Facts, uh, don't plead law. The examiners uh, are those coming from good experienced legal background. They see day, day in and day out, so they know the law. You, you must associate the facts. Okay? ABC was 45 years old at material time, so less than 60 years old. Gariskana, I mean, underline, so that you know what is the provision. Because for you to claim, must be actual earning and also less than 60 years old. So you home, you use the, the two things associate factually, you know. You do not need to, oh, according to section 28, blah, 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 you must uh, six, uh, less than 60 uh, actual in income. You are just par parroting your law on it. Not, not very important. Uh, because during uh, submission, you know, oral submission inside the court, the court never questioned us about the law because the judge uh, can half far already. So what is your facts here? Oh, the fact is John Lennon was uh, 45. And then, he was earning as a lawyer, you know, something like that. Okay, so please argue, huh? Eh? Mm. And then earning legitimate income. So you said that the limbs are satisfied. Okay, use this and one two case law finish. If you cannot, just like me, use Yang Sambia la, or actually Chua Kim Suan la. Chua Kim Suan, I think famous case la, against government of Malaysia. So to calculate loss of future earning. Okay, we refer back to your section 28A, subroot 2, subroot D, subroot I. So this is how important is it uh, to, to, to mark at your section 28A. Okay, and quickly use a marker to mark the provision. Otherwise, when you read so many questions, your eyes are uh, uh, becomes blurry, you know. You may miss the whole section. Where is it? Uh? I just couldn't find it. Harvest, not nice. Lah. Okay, so statutory multiplier is provided this one, section 28A, subroot 2, subroot D, and I. You use 60 minus 45, straight away apply, and then uh, divided by 2, then you get 7.5. So multiplicant from this case, uh, because the, uh, the, the facts provided is quite confusing. It said that he earned 8,000, 18,000, used 4,000 for himself, and then now his salary is 6,000. So which method you want to use? You want to minus EPF, minus income tax, and plus, uh, sorry, plus EPF, minus income tax, and minus expenses you want to use, or you want, want to use an easy option? For us, uh, for us, usually we are looking at the significant reduction. Previously, I'm earning... 20,000. Now I'm earning 10,000. Oh, due to this incident, I mean, due to this medical, uh, sorry, this uh, accident, I suffered discrepancy. I lost 10,000 that ought or supposed to be earned by me. So I use straight away calculate like that. Okay. I use deduction method. Okay. And this is allowed uh, actually. So loss of future earning equivalent to 7.5 uh, 7 times the loss times 12. RMX to show you no move on. Don't calculate. Uh. Don't, some people they will just uh, draw and draft and then calculate. Don't, don't do so. Okay, just X will do the job. So future cause of care. Facts are not clear, but likely not necessary. John Lennon can ambulate with crutches. Okay, submit so lah. So the cost of physiotherapy might be categorized here with the certification of the medical professionals as the duration uh, John Lennon needs it. Because he said he knew uh, he, he, he needs this uh, uh, 
uh, what we call physiotherapy once in a month. Right? So we do not know when will it last. So this will, will be assessed by the court later lah, with expert opinion. The physiotherapist will probably say, oh, uh, John Lennon's leg like that lah, probably will need five years uh, physiotherapy. So this one, we cannot tender as receipt to, to classify under special, special damage. We can put under future cost of care, lah, as simple as that. Okay. So, section 8 pula, CLA, because estate still not time bar. Dependency out. So, estate claim rather simple. Funeral, you can claim. Section 7, sub rule 3, 2. Uh, in fact, this is section 8, sub rule 2. Uh. Okay. It must not be claimed in duplicity. That means this. Uh, what we call um, uh, you cannot double claim because this case has no issue of double claim. Dependency is out already. So you can claim under estate for funeral. Okay? And then subsequently is your grant of probate or letter of administration, the will is, uh, I mean the letter of administration uh, extraction, what is the medical cost, you know, because young um, young one dying in the accident, you may need to undergo foreign forensic um, medical expert examination to certify the real cause of death is from the accident. Otherwise, there might be some foul play. We never know. So that's why medical bill will incur and pre-death loss of earning you can claim under section 8 sub rule 2. Okay? But this one is a little bit hard to argue, you know, pre-death loss of earning because Yoko Yono, uh, Yoko Yono, Yoko Ono seems die on the spot. There's no gap. Like she was ICU for one month, then she died. Uh, that one month probably can claim, but this one I don't think. Uh. And pain, pain and suffering and loss of amenity unlikely because died on spot. Okay. So bereavement you can claim up to 30,000. Read together with your section 7, sub rule 3A. And again, no duplicity, uh, no duplicity of claim. Okay, very important. Huh. Okay. Not yet good, good luck. Just, just a statement of claim for Todd. I'll just share the screen. Todd also, uh, you must practice how to write a proper statement of claim. Okay, May, uh, just try to remember whenever accidents, surely it is session court. Confirm session court, okay? So, this case is happening in a Seremban 2, isn't it? And the defendant is staying in a where? Vision Height, Seremban 2. You can see, isn't it? My statement, statement of claim, I share already, okay? So, this is the forum. Session court at Seremban in the state of the Greece Sembilan. Okay, this out one word, huh? very important. Malaysia. Okay, and then civil suit number. Okay, regardless, sometimes people will say you put summon number inside the what we call uh session court. You can put civil suit number also, no problem. Uh, because this one uh, the the last the this one the civil suit number will be the will be the read number that uh given by the court, not you. Okay, but to show to the examiner, you know, you just put this line. Summon number also acceptable. Okay, and between who is the party? Because the question specifically asks us to claim personal injury claim. That means the one that alive. Lah. Who is alive? John Lennon. Okay, John Lennon. Ah. John Lennon. Am I getting the spelling wrong? Let me. One N or two N? Be very particular, huh? sometimes, uh, yeah, to end. So I'm right. So, okay. And then, uh, John Lennon, NRIC, my standard of practice uh, to show that I know, uh, I have seen a real statement of claim before. This is how I do. Uh, I'll do. And dot, 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 three dot, plaintiff. Okay, plaintiff. And don't miss out the end, Uru Versailles, eh? and Josh Best. And he's an individual as well. So, NRIC number, why, 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 and defendant. 
Okay. In examination, uh, you, you, you try to figure out, like, you put A, la. don't everyone seems why, 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 then a little bit fishy, isn't it? So, statement of claims, okay? First, you start with the introduction, introduction of the plaintiff. Again, you start with the, he's then individual, and what is the residential address? Given here is Bukit Labu. Uh, but my advice is you try to top up this, okay? You try to top up that. Uh, usually, the complete address in Malaysia will not be just staying in Bukit Labu, isn't it? Must be jalan, la, must be some taman, la, okay? So you you put in the information as in you know, la, okay? At all material time, plaintiff is a motorcycle uh, rider, okay? Proper word, I think it's rider, driver. Okay. And then the defendant is an individual whose residential address is at number Y, Jalan ABC. Be quick, huh? just write. And then Vision Heights, Seremban 2. This one, I get it from the facts. Huh? Okay, Negeri Sembilan. At all material time, the defendant is a car driver. So you roughly, from the first two paragraphs already, you said that the parties are individual in capacity. And then, what are roughly the relationship? Like just now, the contract you did mention, uh, you, you you already roughly you know by looking at a few paragraph, uh, why I, I can make out what happened. Uh, house buyer seller a house confirm what the subject matter is about the house like this uh, motorcycle driver car driver confirm next. I already prom my reader. That means the judge lah. Okay, what? I am going to talk about will be an accident, okay? So, on 1st of uh, 2014, copy from this fact at 2 p.m., uh, 2 a.m., the plaintiff was driving his motorbike bearing the registration number. This one also from the fact, okay, like this. So, in the junction of at Jalan S2 B11, uh, very important, you cannot just miss out those important facts because statement of claim uh, is um is a pleading you know you this one is your main important document subsequently whatever evidence uh, will be bound by these four corners of your pleading isn't it so you do not plead this you blur uh, like oh in, in one route or at one junction of the route then the plaintiff collide by the car driven by the defendant Finish. No other facts. I think the examiners will mark you very low. You must catch facts. Again, I said facts huh? from the question. Then you put it in. Okay. So Jalan X S2 B11 near Paparish Seremban 2. So plaintiff had collided with a motor car driven by defendant bearing registration number NZ666. Okay. And what happened after the uh, accident? You put the blame on the defendant partly or entirely. Usually, we put all the blames to the defendant uh, because we want to in favor of the plaintiff. You will see, use this standard. Uh, the collision was wholly or partly due to the negligence of the defendant. And what are the negligence on part of the uh Defendant, failure to keep himself alert and conscious. This one, I think I repeat already. Cannot break, decelerate, to avoid. Okay, this one also I, I stated just now. For my reasons, why he falls short of standard of care. And failure to manage, swerve or control the car, avoid hitting the plaintiff. And failure to keep proper outlook when encroaching into the road junction near Papa Ridge, Seremban 2. And due to the aforesaid negligence on part of the defendant, the plaintiff suffered pain, injury, loss, and damages. This one almost universal. Uh, you just copy. Okay. And particular of injuries or particulars of personal injuries also can. So you write down whichever that is available inside the medical report. Usually, they'll put a complete one for you. How old is the plaintiff? Because later on, you need to claim for your, your loss of future earnings, isn't it? So, this is the part where you put uh, uh, 
the this one you know the injuries and also his age also okay so 45 years old at the age uh, at the time of motor vehicle accident that had been comatose from uh, comatose for two weeks in the hospital he suffered from one two three four all copy from medical report and he had undergone surgeries for the for say injuries he was warded for 44 days open discharge he was ambulating with crutches and required further physiotherapy so one simple thing uh, already reflect that you are going to claim a substantial amount from the defendant okay and subsequently you put the particular of special damages okay what are the aga aga uh, because you did argue on the damages in your question b right so you aga aga put in medical bill from hospital seremban okay claim pre-trial loss of uh, earning from the day of accident until date of trial also claim so pre-trial nursing care from date of accident this one uh, uh, this one uh, this one until date of trial also you must claim everything uh, and sum up to the uh, RMXYZ. Like I said, uh, if you cannot recall how much is it, how much is it, just put ABC. Okay, numerical for uh uh if you are writing uh what we call one million or what that uh eight hundred thousand, you must you, you do know that uh order 18, one of the rules said that you must put it in numerical form. Uh. Alphabet, you cannot write 800,000. You must put 800050 behind that. Okay? Very important. Uh. That's why I don't like to, in my examination, uh, my time, uh, I don't like to write the numerical form, you know, to avoid mistake. Okay? This one, uh, they don't know. A, A maybe 5,000, maybe 6,000. It's just a representation. Uh, okay? And finally, the plaintiff claim what other prayers special damages in the sum of xyz general damages interest costs uh this one standard uh, such further and other relief at this uh, uh i mean the honorable court being fit and proper to grant and dated this one from now day onward just change to six because your exam date is six of november Okay, November. Holding oh, sun. Okay, and sign. Practice signing and solicitors for plaintiff must write. Huh? And this statement of claim is filed by the one, your name. Okay, the solicitors for the plaintiff whose address for service is at so and so. Write fully and telephone number, fax, email as well if it is needed. Okay. As simple as that. Any question that you want to ask, I should stop.